Welcome back guys to another video. I'm really excited to be back. I was away in a filming project and I was thinking about different ways that I could actually add new elements to my videos. I've obviously spoken about the music video itself and what they're using, cameras, gimbals, LEDs and all that cool stuff. Uh, when I spoke about the musicianship, a lot of the time I'm just speaking in terms, I'm not actually demonstrating anything and I thought well, it would be cool to add that new dimension so I have my contact suite where I can have orchestrations, keyboards, and so on. And also I have my guitars as well. So I chose something deliberately, which is immersive. You know, there's a lot going on. And this band, Zandria, and this song, My Curse is My Redemption. This song came out five months ago, but it's really cool. I am aware of this song. I have heard it before. This is not a reaction video. It's analysis video. And... This band are awesome, really, really good. There's so much going on. They've been on the go for a very long time. They have a lot of great music. Uh, this is a good example of what we can jump into and break down and it all that good stuff. And another reason why I chose them is because they're ready to go on tour and they're being supported by Phantom Elite and Scarlet Riot, both killer bands. What a cool show. And because I haven't done any analysis or breakdown on Zandria before, I thought, why not do it now? So let's just jump right into it. This is Zandria, my curse is my redemption. Okay, before we get into the first verse and chorus and so on, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. So first we want to talk about the video itself. The video is shot against a green screen. So like I'm talking to you now, I can stand with a green screen to the back of me, talk to the camera, remove the green screen, and begin to add cool stuff like animations, video clips, and so on. Um, we have the lyrics, um, we have lens flares and all this really cool stuff it really there's a lot of post-production going on here amazing second thing is the the orchestra the orchestra is very present here and if i bring up my keyboard online so if you think about the key of e this is what they're doing But rather than playing off the E, they're playing on the B. So if you go down to the B, they're going one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven. Ah, excuse me. And so on, you know. I'm not the best keyboard player, forgive me. But yeah, that's what they're doing. They're going one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven. Really nice. And the reason this is so nice is because they're playing in the key of E, but they're using the B, which if you think E, F, G, A, B, is the fifth. So the fifth note of the scale of B is the dominant note. And by playing this sequence, where it goes one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, they finish on the seventh note of that dominant, which is the leading note. And this is really cool because the seventh note of that is an A. Okay, so if you're following me, we're going B, C, D, E, F, G, A. 
and then back to a B. So we can go right back into the melody because the seventh is a leading note which takes us into that B again. But because it's the dominant, you can also use this not just to repeat the same phrase again, you can also use it in key changes over a dominant seventh chord, which we'll get into later in the video. This is really nice composition, really nice. For no one to see There's nowhere to go from here Nowhere for me I have been waiting Okay, so we've heard a verse and a chorus so far, and it's really nice. We've got a lot going on. We have the key of E, and obviously using the inversion, which I've previously spoken about. So guitar-wise, they have like something we would take for granted. The guitars are power chords, and they're played off the key of E, and it's to supplement the consonants of what's going on in the higher register and the orchestrations. So I have my guitar here. So this is an eight string, but uh, I'm going to play on the seven string. So if you think seven, this is a low B. C, D. So this is where we are on the E. So the rhythm is basically going Sounds fairly simple to play, I guess. It, it is generally simple. But let me tell you something. There is something really cool going on here. When the orchestra begins to sustain, so rather than going da dun da dun da dun da dun it starts to go da 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 So it builds its step. And that's when the guitars actually take over in the rhythm. So the, the guitars will start going. So the rhythm begins to break up. Really cool. And this is something that we take for granted in music that it sounds simple. And it may be easy to play. There's nothing like crazy arpeggios or anything like that. Um... But composition-wise, if you think about all the instruments that are in this band, you have the orchestration, you have two guitar players, you have a bass player, you have a vocalist. That's a lot of notes. And if everything was in the same register, same octave, it would get very busy. It would become quite um, dissonant, which isn't the best sound for symphonic metal. So they start to spread the notes out among everybody. Everybody gets their own share of notes. So again, in the orchestra, we have the inversion playing off of the B. We have the guitars that are playing E, and obviously the bass line, which is an octave lower, and the vocals singing over the top of everything. So it's really nice. This is composition at its finest. These guys have been around the a very long time and they've earned this experience and they've made quality music and this is like peak that this is really really nice 
composition. Those notes, so again, I'll bring my keyboard on. It goes. Nice, really cool. So what they're doing is they're playing on the E this time, but they're doing a descending line to get down to the B. So it goes. And what they'll do after this is they'll start to do, again, we've heard this already, where it goes one. But they'll sustain it. They'll build it up in the chords by going. And get that seventh note, which will either repeat the chorus or jump into a new key. Really nice. What a cool video. What a great song. A lot to take away from this in the terms of, we spoke about the guitars and we spoke about the orchestrations. We haven't yet spoke about the vocalist, which is Amber. And she's a new addition. So if you think about, if you're familiar with the band, they have two previous vocalists that I'm aware of, uh, Lisa and Diane. And both are very different voices from what you're hearing right now. Um, what makes Amber so good is her definitive control over her voice. And I've said this so many times in videos, you're thinking, control, what is control? What is control? And 
it's when you're performing on a recording versus going out and doing it live. So what Amber is doing is she can hit way higher ranges than what you're hearing on these recordings, but she's limiting her voice within a box, a box within a box. So if you think this is giant box, it's your infinite range. This is how high you can go. Some vocalists out there are pushing those limits where they're on the edge of that box the whole time. So what Amber does is she limits her voice a box within a box, a smaller box. It could just be four steps of the scale, but she's never overexerting herself. She's always within a, a smaller box. Same with her lower register, that she has a smaller box again. So you have three boxes. You have your maximum range, you have your minimal range, and then you have Amber, which is in the middle, singing comfortably. And there's a reason for this. It's that when you're performing live, so many things can go wrong. Your body can react to heat and it can react to cold. It can react to effects like smoke, condensation, and so on. If you were at Leylandis to rock this year, you remember the immense heat. If you were at Wacken, you remember the, the rain and the damp. So if you're too warm, your body starts to sweat, uh, your lungs begin to expand, your throat reacts differently. You have to have control of your voice. Same in the cold and the damp. Your lungs will contract, your voice will contract, your throat will contract. Everything changes in your body. Your body behaves differently in temperatures. It's same as if you inhale smoke from a smoke machine, a blast could go off and you could be in the middle of singing. By limiting your voice and being within your limits, you can still perform very comfortably. So when you see Zandria live, they're amazing. Really, really good. And I've said this about previous vocalist Diana Leo from Delane, Madeline Lilliston from Elaine. They are really good performers because even though they can hit way, way high, they can wail for days, they can growl and do all this stuff. Again, Melissa Bonney is a great example as well. They limit their voices for this reason. It's not because they can't hit those peaks. It's because they do it for live performance. So what you hear in a recording, you're not going to be disappointed when you go and see them live because this is what they can do. And it's a really nice touch. The next thing about her voice is that she has amazing diction and the attack and release of her notes. So when she enters a note and how she exits and how she pronounces words, she's a melismatic singer. She does a lot of ahs and oohs and las and so on. But she's very pronounced in how she speaks and how she sings those words. So we go to a point in the video where she's singing. Here we go. Dance for no one to see. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go from here. You can see in that she is pronounced. So you hear the word go, you hear the word here. So she attacks the note and she releases it and you hear the word as it should be pronounced. Nowhere for me. Nowhere for me. I have been waiting. So she says the T. She's not just going, I have been waiting. Where the T doesn't really get pronounced. She does, even though she's a melismatic singer. She's very pronounced. And I want to use an example, which is Mariah Carey, one of the greatest vocalists of all time. We're all very aware of how great M Mariah Carey is. But one of her... I wouldn't say a bad habit. It's just one of these things. She's into her performance. When she says the word night, for example, she will go, night, but she doesn't actually say the T. She doesn't pronounce it. She doesn't close out her syllables correctly. And again, she's well into the performance and theatrics. We can forgive her. But in the case of Amber, she 
is very specific and very it's what I'm saying about modern performers they're actually becoming a bit more perfect a bit more tuned the music videos are becoming high standard the standard of modern metal music is extremely high now everybody's got so good at everything the growls have been perfected the highs have been perfected the orchestrations are becoming more advanced if you look at guitar players you've got guys like tim henson and manuel fernandez they're just <laughs> mind fucking us you know tosa nabasi and this is quality music you know and this is a quality voice it's amazing so again we'll give one more example so even though she's going someone awake She's still pronouncing that K and then the up. She's finishing her P, she's closing out on that P. From a that I can't behind. behind. Very cool. She's very pronounced. She is an amazing vocalist. So this is what makes Andrea really special. I think that they're one of the top symphonic metal bands out there they're really good and they've earned their stripes they've earned their time and just like nightwish with indentation and so on they're all so good at composing and writing and bringing all these elements together and let me tell you they really go out in their own tour soon so if they're near to you, they're in your city or somewhere that you can get to and you want to go, you like this and you want to go see it, please do. What you hear, there's live videos of this song and you will hear it for yourself. It's so good. She's amazing. Um, this band and Delane are both bands that I've seen that deliver what they show you. They show you the cards and they just like, yeah, this is the hand you're getting. Boom. And they blow me away. Sandria are the same. Amazing, amazing live band. But the best thing is that you have support bands. Scarlet Riot are opening the show. Hard punk band. Again, the quality of sound is going to be spectacular. And Phantom Elite, I've done an analysis video in a previous video. Marina Latorica is one of my top vocalist in the world right now i think she's insane so so good so you're getting this amazing show with three distinct differently bands but high quality sound so yeah if you have the time they're in your city this is your jam this is your vibe get along and see them um i didn't make it for this um i just thought while they're going out on tour why not mention it and this was a cool breakdown to do. And with these new elements, I'm still like learning the ropes a bit. I have new toys. I have stream deck and all this kind of things as well. Um, I'm still getting used to this whole YouTube thing. So if there's anything that you want to see, additions, maybe you want me to go into doing a mock music video where we have a green screen I talk to the camera and I bring it into Premiere Pro and I start adding effects to show you what goes on behind the scenes of making something like this um maybe writing a piece of music maybe breaking down something like whatever you want to see like we'll do it we'll we'll do it for you um and the reason I want to do this is more information sometimes in videos when I watch them People are talking about terms that they don't necessarily know. And I wouldn't say it's misinformation. It's more they don't know. You know, they've heard a collective term such as dynamics. Dynamics is often used in reaction videos that people say, oh, I love the dynamics. I love this. Sometimes there's no dynamics being displayed. It might just be a clean, same one octave scale and they'll say oh I love the dynamics here there's no actual dynamics going on so 
by giving the information out, what dynamics is, um, what staccato is, what vibrato is, all these collective terms need to be presented to you, the audience, in order to understand more. Um, when I went to study music, that's why I went to do it. I didn't go study music to be a rock star. Um, I went to study because I wanted to know. I wanted more information. So my channel is about delivering those terms to you, delivering the information to you, and that you can learn music videos and um, post-production video effects, even just simply watching a video and reacting to it, that you are the reactor yourself staying at home and you get a bit more information that you can relate to the video. That's the whole purpose of what I'm doing here. Um, I don't want to sit through a video, nod to it and just say that I like the song. Um, that's not what it's about. You can make up your own mind whether you like a song or not. Um, you don't need my permission or my views or my opinion. It's all about you. So I want to give you the more information that you can understand music and understand music videos. And yeah, that's basically it. So if there's anything that you want to see, anything that you want me to make or go into, um, I have multicams now as well. So I can switch to playing keyboard. I can switch to playing guitars. Um, I'm going to get it all set up soon. And whatever you want to see, music video analysis, uh, video breakdowns, maybe composition stuff, uh, music theory, anything that you want to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you very much for watching and giving me your time. Have a nice week. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.